crossbow broadheads for deer. We start now. There's a lot of broadheads on the market today to use in archery hunting. And sometimes it's overwhelming of what's out there. Early on, a lot of these broadheads were made for recurve and compound bows. Then as the crossbows came onto the scene, the manufacturers have specified certain broadheads in their lineup to be used with crossbows. And being that the crossbow shoots faster than most compounds, the biggest problem the manufacturers were having were in expandable broadheads, keeping the blades closed on those broadheads until the impact of the target. But today, most of those problems are non-existent. I have read some fellows have problems. They say their uh, blades open before it comes in contact with the target and they know this by shooting paper targets, then to me that's something they need to address with the manufacturer of that particular broadhead. Now, I'm going to share with you the broadheads that I have been using. If you're looking at expandable heads, this is a head from Dead Ringer. It's a expandable broadhead. It is an adjustable broadhead. This is a trauma broadhead that Dead Ringer had made. Uh, they no longer make it. They have changed. I'm not sure what the new name is, but this particular one under the dead or under the trauma hit name was adjustable. The blades could be expanded from two and a half inch cut. To three and one eighth inch cut and that's what I have them set at right now. I have found this expandable broadhead does real well turkey hunting with the blade set at the furthest opening and with the feathers being so dense on a turkey my arrows are passed through, but they're laying on the other side of the turkey when I go to retrieve it. They do use a O-ring to hold their blade shut in flight. I have not had a problem with my crossbow that these open up during flight. They have worked. Like I said, they work real well on turkeys. I have not tried them on deer. Really never had the opportunity uh, to. I always had a different head in. And uh, with our turkey season coming in when archery season's open, I usually have a different broadhead in. But if I hear or see turkeys, I'll switch it out to these dead ringer traumas as they work real well. Fellas have used fixed blade broadheads in their recurves and compound bows for years. I did when I shot both the recurve and the compound. Towards the end of shooting the compound, I did go to some expandables at that time. These fixed blades here are by Ramcat. It's a 125 grain head. A lot of fellows use these even with their crossbows. They think they're wonderful. I've never tried them. I have these. I don't know if I'll try them this summer uh, to see how they shoot and try them in the fall or not, but I have them. The ones that I have got to like quite a bit are a hybrid head. This particular head is called fixed pandable. It has a fixed cutting surface. It's three quarter inches. Then it has expandable blades. This o-ring pushes back as it hits the deer. 
and the expandable blades give you two inch cutting area. This is what I shot my doe with last year and the accompanying pictures will show you the damage it did to that deer. Now as you saw in those pictures, this broadhead, I ha was really happy with it. It left a good blood trail. It did a tremendous job on both entrance and exit wounds. Very happy with that head. Along those lines, and over winter doing some research, I found another company making a hybrid head that looked interesting to me. And that company is Bloodsport and it's a Grave Digger Extreme. I got them in a 100 grain head. It's a hybrid head also. Now the thing with this hybrid head of Bloodsport is the fixed head is inch and a quarter width. The expandable blades are a lock type of blade. They do not use an o-ring. So that when that hits the deer they come back and open up and the expandable blades gives you two and a quarter inch cutting diameter. Like I said, I was happy, extremely happy with these fixed pandables. But you can see a difference the blood sport with the fixed cutting surface being inch and a quarter instead of three quarter inch as the fixed pandable here is and two and a quarter inch expandable blades over two inch so these blood sports once I get testing them to make sure they're flying okay if they fly all right out of my crossbow they ought to be tremendous when it hits an animal as far as a entrance and exit wound and leaving a blood trail these things ought to be awesome now I have showed you the broadheads that I have used and will be trying out this coming season but just because I'm using those in no way does that say that's what you need to use. I feel the only way you know what broadheads will work in your bow and crossbow are by trying different heads. Like I said before, there's lots of heads out there. You'll go broke trying to buy them all at once. But if you're using a certain type of head and are looking at something that I have shown you or you see something else uh, in the store <clears throat> or someone else has a different video showing the broadheads they use and you might want to try them, buy a pack of them, test them, see how they shoot out of your crossbow and then give it them, you know, if they work fine uh, shooting, they're not erratic, they shoot on point, <clears throat> then give them a try. The following year, you might want to buy another pack of something that you're interested in trying. Do the same thing. Yes, it's going to take you some time that way, but instead of dropping down a thousand dollars buying a bunch of broadheads, spend fifty, well, sixty to a hundred dollars in a year's time and try some different heads. Like I said, they're not cheap to buy. The other thing 
I want to warn you is be very careful on finding a name brand broadhead at a price that is too good to be true. If you find like these blood sports, if you find them online, they're running around forty dollars, I believe. If you're finding them for twenty dollars, they're imitations. They're from China. They're junk. They're not going to do the job that the original ones will do. So be careful. I know we're all looking to save a dollar, but it could hurt you in the long run. Again, the only person that can decide the broadhead that is right for your crossbow setup is you. I can't tell you what's going to work best and nobody else on a forum, on the internet, YouTube, video, can tell you what is best for you. That decision is up to you. So if you want to learn more on DIY hunting projects and crossbow hunting, start today by hitting the round icon subscribe button and you will keep up to date. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.